السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. قبل كم يوم شركه الكترومين احدى شركات بترومين فبترومين اسم عملاق موجود في السوق شركه الكترومين عملت حفل افتتاح في مدينه الرياض وكان الحفل بصراحه مثير كده شويه لبعض الناس ربعوا حواجبهم كده بدهشه ايش اللي حاصل ايش اللي بتسوي الكترومين. اليوم معنا مستر توني، توني اترك له المجال يشرح لنا ايش اللي حاصل في الكترومين وايش الخطه حقتهم خصوصا انه بتكلم عندهم 100 شاحن جاهز او نقاط شحن سيارات جاهزه الان، فخليكم معنا اليوم نتعرف شويه على شركه الكترومين وايش خدماتهم وايش الخطط حقتهم التوسعيه في مجال الشحن الكهربائي ان كان سياره كهرباء او اي خدمات ثانيه اضافيه، فخليكم معنا اليوم. Hello Tony. It's very nice seeing you again. And yourself. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. My friend, you and guys have successfully managed to raise a good number of eyebrows. People were uh, shocked uh, or in a good in a positive way. Uh, they were interested or intrigued to know what's happening. Uh, EV, Electromean. So they're familiar with the word uh, or the name, the famous name of uh, Petromean and all other sister companies and different lines and different services, but Electromean, you know, hence the yeah. name. So yeah. can you please, and the, the green color you're having, uh, the, uh, yes, that, that flag over there. So can I tell us, please, a little bit, let's, would you gonna have us a friendly cup of coffee and a friendly chat today? No problem. And I need you, please, to educate me and the audience. What are we talking about? What's the plans? How would this, uh, help with the 2030 local in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how would it contribute to the economy? How would it help? Uh, I mean, uh, and how would it help if it if it could help either locally or internationally? So please uh, consider me a student here today and educate us. Uh, tell us about your vision, sure. your mission, and what whatever you have in mind. No problem at all. And and I wanna. Uh, I've heard a number of which I want to challenge you before I forget. 100. Yeah, you know what 100 is. Yeah. I'm going to challenge you about this, please. Perfect. Because I'm, I'm having some a little bit of my own devilish ideas, I'll, which I would like to take with you. I'll make sure I cover it off, and if I forget, please remind me. Okay, no. then okay. Okay. So, Electromin. Electromin was launched formally back in November last year, and it was the foresight of our CEO to make sure that, as as also we're part of the Petromin brand, but we're a forward-thinking organisation, and what we need to make sure is that we are ahead of any curve. The benefit of Electromin is that we're not immune to the worldwide trends. So if you look at everybody worldwide, they're talking about emission targets. Obviously we've got the 2030 vision, there was COP26 recently launched. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's all driven around sustainability and how we can improve air quality emission standards. And obviously a key factor in that is transport and mobility. And so Electromin was launched really for two main reasons in Saudi. Um, one is that we're not immune to those trends. So 70% of the top 20 OEMs, car manufacturers, will be 100% electric by 2030. And some of the key brands like Audi, BMW, will be Mercedes, will be there by 2025. And that's only three years away. Yes. And so what we need to make sure is that here in KSA, we are ready for that transformation. And Electromin is there to really help with that transition. We need to take away the anxiety of how do you transition from a traditional vehicle into an EV. And what we do as Electromin is we do the whole solution. We offer a complete ecosystem. And it starts from all the way from consultancy through to the charging infrastructure, the operations, and we can also do the vehicles as well. So we're quite unique in that we can offer the complete solution um, to any of our potential clients. To my knowledge, you're the first and you're the only one who's doing this. We are leading here in, in Saudi right now. There are experts that can do individual component parts. So you've got experts in manufacturing, you've got experts in charger infrastructure, but we attach, we attach all those together. We, we, we aggregate all those services to provide a full turnkey solution. So whether you're an individual or a business or a city or a large fleet operator, we can provide the right solutions to help you on that electrification journey. So if I'm an EV owner, EV operator, EV interested, yeah. and I'm looking for one name that can give me 360 yeah. full services from A to Z, yeah. between, I mean, from the, I, from the moment that I have uh, thoughts and ideas and I want someone to answer them, 
to the point of implementation and yeah. after sales. It's going to be electronic. Absolutely. So the key thing for us is we're, we're not there just to implement and walk away. So we're, we're there to handhold all of our clients all the way through their journey because what they require today will be different to what they require in two, three or four years time. And as the market matures, their requirements will change and we can support them throughout their journey. So we don't just go in and walk away, we're there throughout the journey. And it's not just um, implementing, it's about, the, it starts in the very beginning from the consultation piece. And we make sure that we establish all the client's requirements we then offer the right solution based on their requirements. We then implement that solution and we then operate that solution and then we do continuous refinement. So I think the key thing is that if you need anything to do with e-mobility or electrification, whether it be charging infrastructure or vehicles or software management, we provide that solution. If I'm a, if I'm a single uh, customer or I'm, I'm our SME, yeah. Or a major uh, yeah. player in the market. So this means I'm going to come directly. Absolutely. As I said, um, the, the solutions we offer are not just high level. They are they are bringing down into a user friendly, um, effective installation. So it's about having your requirements. We provide that solution, and we execute that solution with you. And if you're an individual user where you just want a simple home charger to go with your new purchased EV, we can do that. We provide a complete range of products and we're starting with a public charging infrastructure. The critical piece for any transition is to give the end user the confidence to transition away. They don't want the problem. Right now you can drive a traditional vehicle, you want fuel, you go to a fuel station. And you do that way without any anxiety. Yes. If you buy an electric car today, it's where do I charge? How do I find my charger? what happens if I run out of battery. And all those anxieties are barriers for that adoption. And that's a barrier to the 2030 vision in terms of sustainability goals. So we are completely aligned with all of those sustainability targets and the vehicle um, industry or the automotive industry, transportation contributes a significant amount of CO2. And therefore, if we can transition away from traditional vehicles into electric vehicles, that ticks lots of boxes. I am, um, from what I gather from what you're saying, that okay, now I unconsciously might add fuel gas. Yeah, diesel and fuel, I guess, okay? So I'm going to go to gas station, fill it up. So it's, it's uh, completely systematic. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you're going to cover, you're going to remove the anxiety when I have the AV, yeah. where I'm going to charge it, how long would it, how long would Correct. it take to charge? If I'm traveling in town or out town or on highways, so basically you're gonna cover that area, which you're gonna remove the anxiety, and you're gonna be there everywhere on I need. Absolutely. So people talk about chicken and egg. Yeah. You know, right now there's very few electric cars in KSA, so why do we need a charging infrastructure? Well, actually, the one helps the other. So we, as electric, we've already launched, and this is a, this is a we launched at our launch event last week in Riyadh. We are installing and we'll have 100 charging stations live by the first week of June. This is the 100 of them. That's the 100 that we talked about yeah. earlier. Okay, now my question is another question just for you. Now there is a misconception or lack of, uh, sometimes uh, in automotive in general, no, this, this excludes you because I'm talking to yeah. the uh, dealers, car dealers, or mainly the factors. I yeah. Said, you didn't pay enough attention to educating the society. Yeah, okay. So you need that always paying back the society, educating yourself. Absolutely. Now, a lot of misconception or lack of uh, proper information or enough information, everybody thinks that EV, when with our hot weather, is going to explode. Yeah. Or it's not going to last. Absolutely. And they think of it like it's a mobile battery or a charger battery. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, teeny tiny uh, Absolutely. Battery, yeah, yeah. batteries that's going to. So please, I always tell them, guys, for God's sake, there is a radiator. That's going to cool mm -hmm. the battery. So, do you have any thoughts from you? I know that you have a vast expertise. Tom. Yeah. So, can you elaborate a little bit more so to make the customers more uh, self, what do you call it, um, relaxed, move away the battery? Yeah, especially course. from the charger's point or the EV's uh, vehicles. In the yeah. Car. The critical piece here is that we will only operate with partners and with the OEMs that we'll be working with and with the charging manufacturers that we're working with. 
we only work with uh, vehicles that go through the SASO approval. So they have to meet the regulation. We don't just bring in any vehicles uh, that operate them with that risk that you're talking about. So we're confident that any vehicle solution that we offer, um, the OEM to have gone through the correct SASO approval to make sure the vehicles are homologated. And the same with our charging infrastructure. It will all be tested in the relevant heat, dust, climate, to make sure that any solution we offer is correct for the environment that we live in. And again, making sure that those are SASO approved um, chargers and the vehicles go through the homologation process. We make sure that the solution that we offer has gone through those stringent tests. The, the key thing also is to give a bit of background. We commissioned, um, to give you a reason why we're doing what we're doing, we commissioned Ernest and Young to do a market analysis. Mm -hmm. And they came back with very key statistics that were, we already thought were the correct thing, but it was good to have it validated. And they, su they suggested that by 2030, there'll be 1.3 million vehicles, electric vehicles, on the road in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia. And that 50% of all new vehicles purchased in 2030 will be an electric vehicle. So it's a number that's growing dramatically. To support that number of vehicles, you would need around 77,000 public chargers to support 1.3 million vehicles. And that's a type of infrastructure that will give the consumer the confidence that when you were talking about, if I run out of petrol, I go there. You go there without thinking. Yes. And what we need to produce is an infrastructure that gives the EV driver the same level of confidence. So when I talk to you about the 100 chargers we've installed, that's just the very beginning of a much bigger journey. So we've got an eight-year journey to 2030 and beyond. And we need to make sure that Electromin is installed in the right charging infrastructure that will help the consumer make the right purchase, that will help them transition with that comfort. But we will, we will transition. We will add more chargers. We will add high-powered DC chargers. We will ensure that the customer or the user can drive anywhere in the kingdom, the full width, full height, confidently that they can use their EV vehicle and they can charge on route. This is true. Okay, um, I have one last question. Of course. Now I can imagine, well, I'm trying to imagine, so from 100, from 0 to 100, which is super great. Yeah. And from 100 to the 77,000, that's massive. Scale. Absolutely massive scale. Yeah. And anyway, you say it, it's, it's tons of money, tons of efforts and time. Yeah. Especially the uh, the fast charging, the rapid fast charging, the DCs. They are, I mean, regular charging, you, uh, you sleep it over, mm -hmm. that uh, nobody, I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's normal, but fast chargers are, are the name of the game. Now, I understand the EV technology, they are improving, so the uh, the range uh, uh, is getting, uh, the range is getting longer, or more yeah. mileage, more, more kilometrage, as we say, and the charger time is decreasing at the same time. So, um, do you see in the near future, the, the, I understand the numbers, and the 70,000, the 1.3 million cars, I see that. But you see more and more coming, I mean, you have what I call the resistance point in the beginning for any Correct. product, you have resistance. Yeah. Then once you break that resistance, do you see uh, uh, a good number of increase or rapid number of increase in terms of EVs? It's going to come, it's going to come. Yeah, I think you'll be like a hockey stick, so I think it's going to be a slow build and then it will accelerate dramatically. That's a snowball effect. Absolutely. And the reason why it will dramatically accelerate is because the two biggest barriers to markets were battery technology, vehicle choice, and charging infrastructure. Right now, you've got the biggest choice of electric vehicles ever. The battery technology, you've got Lucid who launched recently. Yes. They just launched their car that can do over 500 miles on one charge. So that takes away the, the anxiety and the barrier that doesn't even work for me in the real world. So you've got batteries that when I do five, 600 kilometers quite comfortably, you've got a charging infrastructure that will be in place to support that adoption rate. I think once you've got those two key components, the growth will happen very, very quickly. So if you look at China, you look at Europe, you look at America, they growth was fairly linear. Ours will be more aggressive because those two big barriers on battery technology and vehicle choice have all gone away. The market is fairly mature. What we need to do here in KSA now is catch up, and where we do that is working with the OEMs and having a charging infrastructure. And that's why we, we started with the 100. The 100 is, is just a, a tip, it's just a small drop. But the more people see, oh, there's a charging station, there's a char the more they see it, 
the more con the more confidence they will have in the transition. So we we're, we're there to play a key role in that transition journey. And you want to have me a sooner to the very sooner because um, I tend to experiment experiment on myself. Yeah. So I, I experimented on some manufacturer by na certain nationalities. People that were scared, new come to the market. Yeah. I bought it. I tested it myself. So I wanted to see. Um, if I could give an advice, yes, get this car, it's good, value for money or not, mm -hmm. then I did this uh, process again. Now yeah. I've been in the process of thinking of importing one of these EVs, uh, person from our news, and I want to literally feel how it goes, yeah. how it react. So uh, I know it's not yet um, Lucid or the first, but it's not yet, uh, let's say, Sasu did not approve all yet. They yeah. are going through in the process. Yeah. So once they get that process, I will I will have done already my own experiments on myself. Yes. So I'll be testing your one hundred one of those Perfect. And, one and of you with those one hundred. And I would welcome that. You know, we want people to have the confidence to use the charging infrastructure. So yeah, you can visit any one of our one hundred locations. They're mainly within Petroman Express and within Petroman Auto Care. But we'll be adding, and we're already planning the next one hundred now. Nice. And we're nice. already planning the next DC chargers. The, these are the fast chargers that will be located in some of our fuel stations. So it doesn't stop. As I said, this is a journey between now and 2030 and beyond. The 100 charges is just a drop. As I mentioned, independently, we need 77,000 charges to support this drive that's coming our way. So this is the first mile in, 70, in 77,000 miles. Absolutely, yeah. It's our first milestone. Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your time, Tony. Uh, I, I think I'll be, I'll hold you, I'll hold you to that at least, I'll be sometime soon seeing if I yeah. can get an EV, if I can source out this EV car, whether mine or borrow. Fine. And I want to literally to come and give the, to break the ice, to educate the people, whether they like it or not. It's, it's just a, process, a part of the learning process. Yeah. How long would it take to charge? How fast? How, how, what I'm going to do during this time? Yeah. And uh, how, uh, how convenient is it? Yeah. And, and again, the most important factor, how much I'm going to spend uh, per kilowatt, yeah. how much I'm going to spend per liter in terms of fuel, yeah. how much this is going to give me uh, kilometrage or mileage, yeah. how much this is going to give me. By the end of the day, people with the calculators, of course. and the counters and those yeah. who are conscious yeah, yeah. about how much they would invest, uh, we're going to take it from that on a different episode. And Absolutely. Episode. And I welcome that conversation. Thank you. Thank you, do you feel that you need, uh, if there is something you would like to share, please feel free. Uh, we're here to educate the society, give them more knowledge. And yeah. I couldn't find more knowledge of a person in Saudi Arabia besides yourself. And uh, truly, it's been a pleasure knowing you throughout this period, not only today, but throughout the time we met and we're going to meet a lot. Perfect, thank you. I mean, for me, as I said, the whole piece is education. This is just the startup process. We need to reinforce that and re-educate and support and guide. All we're trying to make sure is that anybody thinking of transitioning, speak to Electromin, because we'll be there to sort of guide them throughout their journey. Thanks a lot, Tony. It's been a really pleasure meeting you today, and uh, thanks for the audience, the kind audience, and definitely we'll have a lot more to come. You are. And we'll be holding you to that challenge. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank thanks you. a lot, my friend. Thank Come you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.